chapter two of the book of saints and friendly beasts this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the book of saints and friendly beasts by abby farwell brown chapter two saint gerasimus and the lion one one fine morning st gerasimus was walking briskly along the bank of the river jordan by his side plodded a little donkey bearing on his back an earthen jar for they had been down to the river together to get water and were taking it back to the monastery on the hill for the monks to drink at their noonday meal gerasimus was singing merrily touching the stupid little donkey now and then with a twig of olive leaves to keep him from going to sleep this was in the far east in the holy land so the sky was very blue and the ground smelled hot birds were singing around them in the trees and overhead all kinds of strange and beautiful birds but suddenly gerasimus heard a sound unlike any bird he had ever known a sound which was not a bird's song at all unless some newly invented kind had a bass voice which ended in a howl the little donkey stopped suddenly and bracing his forelegs and cocking forward his long flappy ears looked afraid and foolish gerasimus stopped too but he was so wise a man that he could not look foolish and he was too good a man to be afraid of anything still he was a little surprised dear me he said aloud how very strange that sounded what do you suppose it was now there was no one else anywhere near so he must have been talking to himself for he could never have expected that donkey to know anything about it but the donkey thought he was being spoken to so he wagged his head and said he haw which was a very silly answer indeed and did not help gerasimus at all he seized the donkey by the halter and waited to see what would happen he peered up and down and around and about but there was nothing to be seen except the shining river the yellow sand a clump of bushes beside the road and the spire of the monastery peeping over the top of the hill beyond he was about to start the donkey once more on his climb towards home when that sound came again and this time he noticed that it was a sad sound a sort of whining growl ending in a sob it sounded nearer than before and seemed to come from the clump of bushes gerasimus and the donkey turned their heads quickly in that direction and the donkey trembled all over he was so frightened but his master only said it must be a lion and sure enough he had hardly spoken the word when out of the bushes came poking the great head and yellow eyes of a lion he was looking straight at gerasimus then giving that cry again he bounded out and strode towards the good man who was holding the donkey tight to keep him from running away he was the biggest kind of a lion much bigger than the donkey and his mane was long and thick and his tail had a yellow brush on the end as large as a window mop but as he came gerasimus noticed that he limped as if he were lame at once the saint was filled with pity for he could not bear to see any creature suffer and without any thought of fear he went forward to meet the lion instead of pouncing upon him fiercely or snarling or making ready to eat him up the lion crouched whining at his feet poor fellow said gerasimus what hurt you and makes you lame brother lion the lion shook his yellow mane and roared but his eyes were not fierce they were only full of pain as they looked up into those of gerasimus asking for help and then he held up his right fore paw and shook it to show that this was where the trouble lay gerasimus looked at him kindly lie down sir he said just as one would speak to a big yellow dog and obediently the lion charged then the good man bent over him and taking the great paw in his hand examined it carefully in the soft cushion of the paw a long pointed thorn was piercing so deeply that he could hardly find the end 
no wonder the poor lion had roared with pain gerasimus pulled out the thorn as gently as he could and though it must have hurt the lion badly he did not make a sound but lay still as he had been told and when the thorn was taken out the lion licked gerasimus hand and looked up in his face as if he would say thank you kind man i shall not forget now when the saint had finished this good deed he went back to his donkey and started on towards the monastery but hearing the soft pad of steps behind him he turned and saw that the great yellow lion was following close at his heels at first he was somewhat embarrassed for he did not know how the other monks would receive this big stranger but it did not seem polite or kind to drive him away especially as he was still somewhat lame so gerasimus took up his switch of olive leaves and drove the donkey on without a word thinking that perhaps the lion would grow tired and drop behind but when he glanced over his shoulder he still saw the yellow head close at his elbow and sometimes he felt the hot rough tongue licking his hand that hung at his side so they climbed the hill to the monastery some one had seen gerasimus coming with this strange attendant at his heels and the windows and doors were crowded with monks their mouths and eyes wide open with astonishment peering over one another's shoulders from every corner of the monastery they had run to see the sight but they were all on tiptoe to run back again twice as quickly if the lion should roar or lash his tail now although gerasimus knew that the house was full of staring eyes expecting every minute to see him eaten up he did not hurry or worry at all leisurely he unloaded the water-jar and put the donkey in his stable the lion following him everywhere he went when all was finished he turned to bid the beast good-bye but instead of taking the hint and departing as he was expected to the lion crouched at gerasimus feet and licked his sandals and then he looked up in the saint's face and pawed at his coarse gown pleadingly as if he said good man i love you because you took the thorn out of my foot let me stay with you always to be your watch-dog and gerasimus understood well if you wish to stay i am willing so long as you are good he said and the lion leaped up and roared with joy so loudly that all the monks who were watching tumbled over one another and ran away to their cells in a terrible fright locking the doors behind them gerasimus carried the water-jar into the empty kitchen and the lion followed after sniffing about the place to get acquainted just as a kitten does in its new home the lion lay down in front of the fire and curled his head up on his paws like the great big cat he was and so after a long sigh he went to sleep then gerasimus had a chance to tell the other monks all about it at first they were timid and would not hear of keeping such a dangerous pet but when they had all tiptoed down to the kitchen behind gerasimus and had seen the big kitten asleep there so peacefully they were not quite so much afraid i'll tell you what we will do said the abbot if brother gerasimus can make his friend eat porridge and herbs like the rest of us we will let him join our number he might be very useful as well as ornamental in keeping away burglars and mice but we cannot have any flesh-eating creature among us some of us are too fat and tempting i fear and he glanced at several of the roundest monks who shuddered in their tight gowns but the abbot himself was the fattest of them all and he spoke with feeling so it was decided gerasimus let the lion sleep a good long nap to put him in a fine humour but when it came time for supper he mixed a bowl of porridge and milk and filled a big wooden platter with boiled greens then taking one dish in each hand he went up to the lion and set them in front of his nose leo 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 he called coaxingly just as a little girl would call kitty 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 to her pet the lion lifted up his head and purred like a small furnace for he recognized his friend's voice but when he smelled the dishes of food he sniffed and made a horrid face wrinkling up his nose and saying ugh he did not like the stuff at all but gerasimus patted him on the head and said 
you had better eat it leo it is all i have myself share and share alike brother the lion looked at him earnestly and then dipped his nose into the porridge with a grunt he ate it all and found it not so very bad so next he tried the greens they were a poor dessert he thought but since he saw that gerasimus wanted him to eat them he finished the dish and then lay down on the hearth feeling very tired gerasimus was delighted for he had grown fond of the lion and wanted to keep him so he hurried back to the dining-hall and showed the empty dishes to the abbot that settled the lion's fate thenceforth he became a member of the monastery he ate with the other monks in the great hall having his own private trencher and bowl beside gerasimus and he grew to like the mild fare of the good brothers at least he never sought for anything different he slept outside the door of his master's cell and guarded the monastery like a faithful watch-dog the monks grew fond of him and petted him so that he lived a happy life on the hill with never a wish to go back to the desert with its thorns two wherever gerasimus went the lion went also best of all leo enjoyed their daily duty of drawing water from the river for that meant a long walk in the open air and a frolic on the bank of the jordan one day they had gone as usual gerasimus the lion and the stupid donkey who was carrying the filled jar on his back they were jogging comfortably home when a poor man came running out of a tiny hut near the river who begged gerasimus to come with him and try to cure his sick baby of course the good man willingly agreed this was one of the errands which he loved best to do stay brother he commanded leo who wanted to go with him stay and watch the foolish donkey and he went with the man feeling sure that the lion would be faithful now leo meant to do his duty but it was a hot and sleepy day and he was very tired he lay down beside the donkey and kept one eye upon him closing the other one just for a minute but this is a dangerous thing to do before he knew it the other eye began to wink and the next moment leo was sound asleep snoring with his head on his paws then it was that the silly donkey began to grow restless he saw a patch of grass just beyond that looked tempting and he moved over to it then he saw a greener spot beyond that and then another still farther beyond that till he had taken his silly self a long way off and just then there came along on his way from dan to beersheba a thief of a camel-driver with a band of horses and asses he saw the donkey grazing there with no one near and he said to himself aha a fine little donkey i will add him to my caravan and no one will be the wiser and seizing silly by the halter he first cut away the water-jar and then rode off with him as fast as he could gallop now the sound of pattering feet awakened leo he jumped up with a roar just in time to see the camel driver's face as he glanced back from the top of the next hill leo ran wildly about sniffing for the donkey but when he found that he had really disappeared he knew the camel driver must have stolen him he was terribly angry he stood by the water jar and roared and lashed his tail gnashing his jaws as he remembered the thief's wicked face now in the midst of his rage out came gerasimus he found leo roaring and foaming at the mouth his red-rimmed eyes looking very fierce and the donkey was gone only the water-jar lay spilling on the ground then gerasimus made a great mistake he thought that poor leo had grown tired of being a vegetarian of living upon porridge and greens and had tried fresh donkey meat for a change oh you wicked lion he cried you have eaten poor silly what shall i do to punish you then leo roared louder than ever with shame and sorrow but he could not speak to tell how it had happened the saint was very sad tears stood in his kind eyes you will have to be donkey now he said you will have to do his part of the work since he is now a part of you come stand up and let me fasten the water jar upon your back he spoke sternly and even switched leo with his olive stick leo had never been treated like this he was the king of beasts and it was shame for a king to do donkey's work his eyes flashed and he had half a mind to refuse and to run away then he looked at the good man and remembered how he had taken out that cruel thorn 
so he hung his head and stood still to be harnessed in the donkey's place slowly and painfully leo carried the water-jar up the hill but worse than all it was to feel that his dear master was angry with him gerasimus told the story to the other monks and they were even more angry than he had been for they did not love leo so well they all agreed that leo must be punished so they treated him exactly as if he were a mean silly donkey they gave him only oats and water to eat and made him do all silly's work they would no longer let him sleep outside his master's door but they tied him in a lonesome stall in the stable and now he could not go to walk with gerasimus free and happy as the king of beasts should be for he went only in harness with never a kind word from his master's lips it was a sad time for leo he was growing thinner and thinner his mane was rough and tangled because he had no heart to keep it smooth and there were several white hairs in his beautiful whiskers he was fast becoming melancholy and the most pitiful beast in all the world is a melancholy lion he had been hoping that something would happen to show that it was all a mistake but it seemed as though the world was against him and truth was dead it was a sad time for gerasimus too for he still loved leo though he knew the lion must be punished for the dreadful deed which he was believed to have done one day he had to go some distance to a neighbouring town to buy provisions as usual he took leo with him to bring back the burden but they did not speak all the way gerasimus had done the errands which he had come to do and was fastening the baskets on each side of the lion's back a group of children were standing around watching the queer sight a lion burdened like a donkey and they laughed and pointed their fingers at him making fun of poor leo but suddenly the lion growled and began to lash his tail quivering like a cat ready to spring on a mouse the children screamed and ran away thinking that he was angry with them for teasing him but it was not that a train of camels was passing at the moment and leo had seen at their head a mean wicked face which he remembered and as the last of the caravan went by leo caught sight of silly himself the missing donkey of the monastery at the sound of leo's growl silly pricked up his ears and stood on his forelegs which is not a graceful position for a donkey then the camel driver came running up to see what was the matter with his stolen donkey but when he came face to face with leo whose yellow eyes were glaring terribly the thief trembled and turned pale for he remembered the dreadful roar which had followed him that day as he galloped away across the sand holding silly's halter the poor donkey was quivering with fear thinking that this time he was surely going to be eaten piecemeal but after all this trouble on silly's account the very idea of tasting donkey made leo sick he only wanted to show gerasimus what a mistake had been made all this time gerasimus had been wondering what the lion's strange behaviour meant but when he saw leo seize the donkey's bridle he began to suspect the truth he ran up and examined the donkey carefully then leo looked up in his face and growled softly as if to say here is your old donkey safe and sound you see i didn't eat him after all that is the real thief and turning to the camel driver he showed his teeth and looked so fierce that the man hid behind a camel crying take away the lion kill the wicked lion but gerasimus seized silly by the bridle this is my beast he said and i shall lead him home with me you stole him thief and my noble lion has found you out and he laid his hand tenderly on leo's head he is mine you shall not have him cried the camel driver dodging out from behind the camel and trying to drag the donkey away from gerasimus but with a dreadful roar leo sprang upon him and with his great paw knocked him down and sat upon his stomach do not hurt him leo said gerasimus gently but to the camel driver he was very stern look out sir thief he said how you steal again the donkey of an honest man even the yellow beasts of the desert know better than that and will make you ashamed be thankful that you escape so easily then he took the baskets from leo's back and bound them upon silly who was glad to receive them once more from his own master's hands for the camel-driver had been cruel to him and had often beaten him 
so he resolved never again to stray away as he had done that unlucky time and when they were all ready to start gerasimus called leo and he got up from the chest of the camel-driver where he had been sitting all this time washing his face with his paws and smiling my poor old leo said gerasimus with tears in his eyes i have made you suffer cruelly for a crime of which you were not guilty but i will make it up to you then happily the three set out for home and all the way gerasimus kept his arm about the neck of his lion who was wild with joy because he and his dear master were friends once more and the dreadful mistake was discovered they had a joyful reception at the monastery on the hill of course every one was glad to see poor silly again but best of all it was to know that their dear old lion was not a wicked murderer they petted him and gave him so many good things to eat that he almost burst with fatness they made him a soft bed and all the monks took turns in scratching his chin for ten minutes at a time which was what leo loved better than anything else in the world and so he dwelt happily with the good monks one of the most honoured brothers of the monastery always together he and gerasimus lived and slept and ate and took their walks and at last after many many years they grew old together and very tired and sleepy so one night gerasimus who had become an abbot the head of the monastery lay gently down to rest and never woke up in the morning but the great lion loved him so that when they laid st gerasimus to sleep under a beautiful plane tree in the garden leo lay down upon the mound moaning and grieving and would not move so his faithful heart broke that day and he too slept for ever by his dear master's side but this was not a sad thing that happened for think how dreadful the days would have been for leo without gerasimus and think how sad a life gerasimus would have spent if leo had left him first oh no it was not sad but very very beautiful that the dear saint and his friendly beast could be happy together all the day and when the long night came they could sleep together side by side in the garden End of chapter two